Hi. So, this is my 1997 Toyota Hi Super Custom, and I've had it for just over a month now. And I notice that there's an issue with it, a big issue, which could have turned out to be catastrophic for the gearbox. If you've read the title for this, the torque converter was not locking up. For those people who just want a straight up answer, it was the engine temperature sensor. But for those who want to know what the symptoms that this car had versus maybe what your car is experiencing, this is what happened. So I had this car for just over a month now, and as soon as I bought it, I had the entire car serviced, which included the automatic transmission fluid and the automatic transmission filter. What I realized was uh, nine out of 10 times on the motorway, the car would be revving at about two and a half thousand RPM, sometimes more. And that one out of 10 times, it would be sitting at closer to 2100 RPM. So I knew that there was a big difference. About a month later, I pulled the dipstick for the automatic transmission and the fluid was black. So I knew that there was something definitely wrong with it. The more you drive a car, the more you get to realize what it should drive like. And so because this is so new to me, I didn't know exactly what normal should feel like until I realized one day when the torque converter did lock up, sitting at 100 kilometers an hour, and I felt the surge of torque as the car came back into its power band. So right then and there, I knew that my torque converter was not locking up when it should. And see, I've spent my entire life looking at cars, looking at engines, and just being a car enthusiast. But what I haven't spent time looking at is automatic transmissions because they're boring. You put them into drive and you go, that's what they're there for. So I did the next best thing, which is visit as many automatic transmission specialist workshops that I could. And they all did the same thing. Not one of them wanted to pull the dipstick out of the car and even take a look at it, uh, let alone diagnose what the issue was that I had. All of these workshops were packed. They were so busy with American pickup trucks and hot rods and classic cars. And I realized quickly that these workshops are making between $3,000 and $15,000 per job. And they can't be bothered dealing with diagnosing something like this for a couple of hundred. But all of them did one thing, and they all told me that my gearbox was kaput and that it would cost me about $2,000 for a replacement second-hand gearbox to be put in. Now, I didn't want that because if you've seen the first video that I made on this car, you would know that it's low kilometer, you would know that it's in really good shape. And I live in Australia, so a replacement gearbox here would have done about 260,000 to 350,000 kilometers. And my car hasn't done anywhere near that. So I really didn't want to replace the gearbox if I didn't have to. All of the workshops gave me advice. They told me to start disconnecting the plugs on the gearbox, check the corrosion, and uh, even tap into the lockup solenoid wire and drive around with the multimeter to make sure that it was getting charged. All of them also told me that the engine ECU was probably fried and I need to buy a new one. Uh, and that it's a common problem, which is strange because none of them had ever seen one of these cars in Australia. So here's what I did. I didn't have a lot of money, uh, but I did have some time. So I spent a couple of days on Google trying to find out if anyone else had experienced the same thing. And it turns out a lot of people have, not just with the A340E and A340F gearboxes that this car has, but also Holden's, GM's, Ford's, any number of manufacturers. And while everyone posed the question, the same question that I had, why is my torque converter not locking up? There were no answers. Everyone said, try the solenoids, try the ECU, try everything but the simple stuff. And so I spent a couple of days on Google and I realized how this ECU works. This is a bit of a dinosaur. Um, it doesn't actually use a CAN bus system. The car doesn't actually know what's happening with it. It just takes resistance measurements from sensors and then interprets that data into laws that's been programmed into it. So if X amount of things are within spec, it can then allow a certain something to happen. So for this car to lock up, there has to be three main parameters that are met. The throttle must not be down more than 30%. It has to be in drive with overdrive on, and the engine must be up to running temperature. So that got me thinking. The car knows when I hit the throttle because it shifts up and it shifts down perfectly. I know that the speed sensor works because it shifts up precisely at certain speeds consistently. And I know the car knows it's in drive with overdrive on because if I turn overdrive off, uh, fourth gear comes off and it goes back into third. So it got me thinking because when I bought this car, the temperature gauge was being a bit wonky. And by replacing the temperature gauge sensor, it fixed that issue. And this car has three sensors. One is for the fans in terms of coolant temperature. One is for the gauge. 
and the third one is for the ECU. So I figured for $47 versus $2,000 for a replacement gearbox. And given that one sensor was already faulty, I'd buy a replacement ECU temperature sensor and see if that fixed the issue. And obviously you know that it did. So now I have gears one, two, three, four, and then at about 82 kilometers an hour, there's a surge of torque as the torque converter locks up and the RPMs come back down into its power band. So because I've had a few people message me and ask how I replace the sensor on this car, I thought I'd make this quick video just because I want to help as many people out there as possible, it might just resolve your issues. So I'm going to show you how I changed the sensor on this one. I didn't film it when I did do it, but because I've had so many people message me on Facebook and whatnot asking where the sensor is, how I got to it, is it too difficult? Um, I'll show you how I did it on this one. So you need a 12 millimeter socket and an extension, which I have here. Um, I'm going to cheat because I have a rattle gun. And this is just to take off the protective underbody shield on the passenger side of the car. So you'll need a 19 millimeter spanner for your water temperature sensor. And if you're wondering what the part number is, it's a CS840 from Greek. That's it there. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly. And it is the only water temperature sensor on a 1KZTE that has two wires going into it. So simple 19 millimeter fitment and it is in a bit of a tricky spot but you know what if you have a ratchet spanner you're probably going to be better off than i am otherwise all you really need is that a little bit of uh, thread sealant on the temperature sensor itself which you don't really need but because it's in such a tricky place i don't want to be under there fixing any leaks so better safe than sorry okay let's get started Rattle gun. Now, if you have a look here at the actual engine side of things, deep down in there is where the temperature sensor lives. So this one here is a temp sensor for the fans that kick on. This one here, which I've recently replaced, is for the gauge. And the sensor that we need to replace is above the starter motor behind the oil filter and if you were to get to it from the top here well i don't envy you because there is a whole lot of stuff in the way there is vacuum pipes there is the entire wiring loom and realistically the easiest way to get to it is from underneath so for the high ace we have this great big metal protective panel that needs to come off so you can get access that's the transfer case there for reference there is another metal protective case here, which you do not need to remove. So it's just this one, and it's rather simple because there is one, two, three, four, and five 12 millimeter bolts that need to come out. If you want to go. So one tip I will give you is not all of the bolts are the same. So when you do take the panel off, what I like to do is just line up the bolts on the ground in the same orientation that they came out. So there's no way someone as stupid as me can screw it up. And then purely for access, a couple of these bolts are pretty low. So we'll remove our extension. I'm just gonna move my nuts and bolts further up. Here, in the right orientation. So that I can remember where each one goes. Now, removing this panel can be a bit fiddly because there is this bracket that holds it in place back here. 
and you can't really slide it that too much forward or backwards. So we will just take some wiggling. I actually thought I had to remove the front panel as well until just by accident it slipped out on its own. So I know for sure that you do not have to remove the back panel. There we go. And put this out of the way. And now you can see the great amount of accessibility you have underneath the high ace. So you have your really small rear drive shaft there, your transfer case here, your gearbox there, and then up there, let me get my torch. So you can see where we're going. Front drive shaft, going up to the bell housing. That there is a starter motor on the side of the bell housing. You can see the blue oil filter up there and the temperature sensor that we want to replace is this one here and it goes into the block itself not the head but you have just enough room i don't know if i can with a torch in here to get your spanner in there over the plug itself you'll have to disconnect the uh, wiring harness obviously which is rather simple and you can get your spanner on there and it just takes a bit of patience and you'll have a sore neck but you replace that and then you should have torque converter lockout so once you're finished with that the last thing to do is not to forget to top off your coolant and depending on how much coolant came out and how much air went in to bleed the system properly and then obviously take the car for a run make sure it warms up properly and then uh, hopefully your torque converter should lock up. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry. If it does, you're welcome. As always, thanks for watching.